and I remember we mentioned we had a list of about 12 different ways that LeBron scored in that, in that game film, right? And we talked about how you should develop those as well for yourself so that you have a game that no matter what situation you're put in or what kind of players you're playing against, you can be valuable to the team and you can contribute, right? Right? Okay. Stay with me here. So, because look, so what we're going to build right now is I'm going to pretty much teach you how to plan to have the game that you want. Because a lot of times we just work out and hope something good comes. Right? Oh, I'm working on my dribbling, so I got this. And then we never use it. Or I'm working on my shooting, but we don't have certain spots we hit from or certain spots we're comfortable from, and we don't hit a lot in the game. Does that make sense? Okay, so here's the first thing. The first thing, before you have moves, before you have go-to spots, before you have anything like that, you got to master some fundamentals, okay? And, and there's a lot of fundamentals, but here's the three ones that I think every single player absolutely has to have. You got to be able to dribble, you've got to be able to shoot, you've got to be able to finish, and you've got to be able to pass. Dribble, shoot, finish, and pass. And that's kind of a no-brainer, am I right? We all know that these things are important. But when I say do that, I'm not just saying, hey, I can do them good in a drill. Because a drill is only leading up to you being able to do them well in a game. Okay? But I'm saying, can you do these at game speed? And can you do these versus defender? Does that make sense? So can we do these at game speed? And can we do this versus defender? Don't even pay attention to that, all right? So that's when you know you're gonna start being able to put things in a game where you're gonna be successful and score a lot. Does everybody understand that? Okay, so I would imagine, at just take a rough guess at the age and level you guys are at and watching you for the last one and a half days, we're probably, probably really good at one thing, we're okay at another, and then the other two probably need some work. Who would agree with that? To some degree. To some degree. Now, our older players like Linda and Matt, they, they were probably, they're probably in the zone right now, and they should be being high school players, where they better have two of them that they're pretty good at, and then really be working on, on getting the other ones finished, especially since they have desires of playing in college and things like that. Does that make sense? Okay? When you look at LeBron, he does all of these well. Am I right? And there's no excuse for height. Well, I'm 6'8", I'm going to be a post now. There's none of that. Okay, I can tell you pretty much the days of true post players are gone. Unless you are over tall, completely taller than everybody else. You know, but even Kevin Durant's how tall? 6'10", six, maybe 6'11", six, and he brings up the ball as a point guard sometimes. Sometimes he's the shooting guard. Sometimes he's the power forward. So, in this day and age, the way the game is moving, you've got to master these. Once you have these mastered, then you can start looking at building your game, okay? Now, I said don't landlock yourself to be in one position or another, but let's just call it being a perimeter player, okay? Being a perimeter player means you can play, not necessarily you always play, but you can play outside the three-point line. Here's the key, but you can play out here, but you can also make, make things work in there. Does everybody understand that? Being a a solid perimeter player that can contribute and score frequently, okay? That's what we need to look at. Now, I think personally what you got to do is, is take that list of what we said and you got to have a self-analysis, if I can figure out how to spell that. Self-analysis. So you got to know what you're already good at. That's got to be part one of your plan. You got to take inventory, right? Okay. If I wanted to start a clothing store, I got to know what kind of clothes I have first, right? Before I can go and tell the world, hey, come buy my Nike stuff, right? Or my Reebok stuff or my Adidas stuff, right? Y'all with me? Yes, sir. Okay. So you got to know what your game's at. And then the first thing I would look at, because you got to build some game experience, is you got to look at what you immediately, what do you need now? What do you need now? And my point is, let's say you're on a team, or you're working towards your school team, or you're trying to get ready to play in college, right? 
You're, you're at that close to that stage. What do you need now? If the coach is pulling you because you brick every shot, you need to work on your jump shot, right? If coach is pulling you because you turn the ball over every time you put it on the floor, that's something you need to work on right now. Does that make sense? And I would look at those four things that we listed, the ball handling, shooting, finishing, and passing, and that's what you got to attack aggressively. Okay? So you get your, your, now, your now skills, and then I'll tell you something that the best people do. The best players in this game plan ahead. They know what they're going to need next. Meaning, either A, they've mastered what they need now. So, let me use this example. They couldn't dribble before, so they went, they got, they got it, and they came to camp, they worked with me or Coach L one-on-one, -on -one. they got the ball handling up, they got it, so now they got it up, they're not only just not turning over the ball, but they're starting to attack the rim now. And they're starting to beat defenders, get the kill boxes, but they've got $5 million moves with two cent finishes. What do I mean by that? Yeah, they can't finish, right? Like, you ever see that person that made that great crossover between the legs move, and they went, and they bricked it hard off the rim for a layup? Right? Some of y'all probably done that, huh? Keep it real, who's done that before? Yeah. Some of you I've seen do it before. Okay? So that's, that. when I say your next skill, but we're still looking at the now, that's where it's got to go. Okay, so maybe I've mastered one, two, and three. Well, I got to get number four. Got it? Now, the other side of next is the next level. What's the next level you play at? Okay, for example, I'm using Michaela. Michaela's going to be a freshman now. Okay, so as a freshman here at Castle Hills, no matter what, if you're high school, because it's a smaller school, you become varsity, right? Hopefully we can build enough and that'll change in a couple years, but right now she's going to be varsity. So she's got to look and say, okay, we all know this. The middle school game is, is, a, is in as competitive as a varsity game is. Would you agree? So as a freshman, she's going to have to play against other freshmen, sophomores, juniors, and seniors. And that may not be the case for all of you going into high school, but the point is every level is more competitive. Everyone understand that? So she's got to look and say, and maybe watch some games, maybe come to me and say, hey, can I get some film, watch and see what I got to do, or a great thing that she did this summer is she went and played club basketball at the JV and varsity level. So she got a chance to get in the game at a very high competitive level and say, okay, well, going into this, I could do this well, but knowing what I know now when I go to these tournaments, man, my ball handling's got to be better. Or I've got to be able to shoot the ball a little more efficient because we don't get as many chances to shoot because the defense is better. Do you understand what I'm saying with that? So that's next level skills. So you got to get both A and B on your next level skills. Okay? A and B on your next level skills. Okay? Now, this is going to sound kind of backwards, but you, you got to kind of stay with me. I told you at the beginning of this that you need to work on every skill because you don't know what position you're going to play and you don't want to be stuck to one, right? Okay, at your age, that's very true, okay? Um, I'm sure there was times Matt was the biggest guy on his team in middle school, so he was a post player. And now he's on the varsity team and there's guys just as big as him, and now he's a guard, right? So you never know, so you build all those skills now, however, the higher levels you get to, the more it is a role-playing game. And here's what I mean, okay? Let's say Drake is the best ball hand on his team. He is going to be the point guard. So now, yes, he built, his, he built his dribbling. He probably built his shooting because point guards have to be able to shoot too. But now he's got to look at other stuff, especially as he gets to the higher levels. In high school, they run more pick and roll. That means pick and roll, okay? He may have to not only run pick and roll, he may have to now be able to know how to beat a press more. He may be able to have to know, he's got to know how to, what we call facilitate. Facilitate means he's got to know, he's got these four guys on his team, 
He's got to know where he gets his shots from, where he gets his shots from, where he's strong at, and what he can do well because as he's coming down, he's got to figure out how to create from that. Okay, I was telling you about Tory. That's what made Tory great. That's what made Tory a great point guard. Even in seventh grade, I'm telling you a true story. When I was coaching at St. Matthews, I was coaching the boys team, but I would always watch the girls. Especially they told me, man, they got this really good point guard. You got to go watch her. I'm like, yeah, right. She's not that good. But then I watched her. Man, Tori would come down and she would start those fast breaks. But when she came down, she knew how to get it to this girl, April. She knew April liked it on the block, liked to turn around, shoot. So she'd get the ball to her there. Okay, I can't remember really the names of everyone else. But when I watched Tori, I'd say, wow, Tori's really got a gift. She knows when and where and how to hit her players to facilitate. So that's a point guard skills, right? Okay, um, let's talk about shooting guard. Let's say Razor Ramon here. She's a shooting guard, right? So she's got to know, obviously, how to, and CS, this is catch and shoot. She's got to know how to move and shoot. She's got to know how to shoot off the dribble. Especially when she gets to high school, she's got to know how to come, uh, shoot coming off screens. So you see where I'm going with this, right? So now you got to learn your role skills. She, she may have to know some pick and roll as well, depending on the system of her team. That's when you can start studying the players like LeBron. You're going to watch George Hill right now, so he's a point guard. You start looking at the other stuff beyond the raw skills. Okay? Because the, the, more you, the, more, the higher level you get in this game, the more you got to know the game. The more you got to understand actions. When people work together, pick and roll is an action. Down screens are an action. You got to understand how, how situations play through. Does that make sense? Okay. I, you know, and then using the story of Tori, when she got the high squad watcher games, and she was still very talented, Tori also knew when she had to go get one for the team or when she, or, or, or she got to the point where now she's calling plays. They didn't really call many plays in middle school as they did high school. You don't have to know the game more, know more plays when you get older. And she knew the right play to call to set up Bianca or to set up um, Alex and get them in the spots where they can get good shots. Does that make sense? So that's, that's, that's where you got to plan your game. And you honestly, honestly need to sit down before school starts and take anywhere from three to five hours and really sit down and think about this. Put your phones away, turn the TVs off, turn the radio off, turn the computer off, and just sit down and think and write. You know, I know we got some people using phones, but when you're thinking, it actually manifests more to write it. I don't know why, they've scientifically proven it. It's been more, it manifests better when you actually physically write it on paper and make a plan. Make a plan and start with the goal of what you want to accomplish and then just make a plan of how you're trying to get there. You work backwards. I want to be an all-state point guard at, and I'm making this up, Reagan High School. Okay? So then figure out what's it going to take. Well, the last all-state average, 20 points a game, 15 assists, whatever, whatever. Well, where are you at now? Keep working down. Well, by freshman, I have to this. By eighth grade, I have to this. Sixth grade, I have to this. And you figure out what the goal is, and you just work your way back. Does everybody understand that? Based upon this. So, when you're up here at this, you're looking at your role skills. Because by that point, you should have your now skills down. And, and the majority of your next skills. And then as you're kind of in this mid area, you're looking at next skills and starting to look at role skills. And then even down here, depending on how young you are, you're looking at now skills. Everybody should be looking at now skills. But some of you a little older, like Matt, Linda, right? Even Deborah starting, you know, you're what, going into eighth grade, you said? She's got to start looking a little faster. Michaela's got to look a little faster. And then start thinking about role skills as well. So we got that? Look, I can tell you right here, Number one, eight out of 10 players don't know what I just taught you. Eight out of 10 players don't even know what I just taught you. And then on top of that, here's the crazy thing. Probably only about two out of 10 of you are actually gonna really sit down and do this and act out your plan. And I don't say that because I doubt you. I say that because that's human tendency. 
for only about 10 or 1 to 2 percent to actually take something they learn, apply it into their life, and commit to it so they see it done. That's why there's very few people who, who reach high levels of success. High, high levels of success. That's why there's thousands upon thousands of basketball players that want to be in the NBA, but there's only so many jobs, right? If there was more, they'd have more teams. Does that make sense? That's why there's only so many, and I'm just using an example, but there's only so many billionaires in the world. Because those billionaires take what they learned on how to become that wealthy and they go and they apply it. Does that make sense? Or, and I'm talking whatever it is. And it can be anything. It really can be anything. But the worst thing you could do right now, in all honesty, is walk out of here without the complete notes. And then the second worst thing you do is go home and not use it and apply it and commit to it. I'm, I promise you, I, I've worked with probably thousands of basketball players over the last 10 years now. Everything from little Tim to, I mean, you talk about players like Becky Hammond, Sophia Young, NBA players, right? Things like that. And all of you will tell you the same thing, that this is what worked for them. This is part of what they did to be where they're at. And this is still while they're doing what they're doing while they're on top of their game. This is still what they're doing. Does everybody understand that? All right. So let's watch the film. We'll watch the film. I know you guys... You